Ray here. I'm glad you could join me. In my last video on teleconverters, I said in passing that I'd be interested in what was then the anticipated announcement of the Z 400mm f2.8 lens with built-in TC. Well, as of late yesterday, we have it. Available for order, and of course, we know the price, which is US $13,996.95. For me in Canada, that's Canadian $17,515.78. At least that's what B&H's price translates to. Noting their fine print, attention, international customers, we do not guarantee the accuracy of any foreign currency information. But that's irrelevant since there's no option to ship this or other Nikon products to Canada from B&H. Now, as usual, I'd be dealing with a Canadian retailer. Anyway, the Canadian price on this lens from Nikon Canada's website and, to pick a verified distributor, Vistec, is $18,199.99. That's a lot of dough. <laughs> I'd muse that Nikon might surprise us with a relatively low price, like they did with the Z9 camera. Well, a person can dream. But given the amount of new technology that's gone into this optical marvel, had I thought about it, it's not surprising that it would have a price to match. 18 grand. So, it's not in my sights, so to speak. Even if it has reflection combating mesoamorphous coat. And speaking of, it also features other coatings and elements we've learned to pronounce, like arneo, fluorine, fluorite, shortwave, refractive, and extra low dispersion. No surprise, it's weather sealed. It has a memory set button to recall a saved focus point, great for wildlife action, drop-in filters, and it looks like <laughs> the polarizer will set you back another 600 bucks or so but all the kinds of well-rounded features you'd expect of a lens in this category and price point. Some commentators are comparing it to a luxury car. Is it a Lamborghini? A Bugatti? Perhaps, given its uh, use case, it's a Range Rover. In the lead-up to the Z9 release, I'd also mention the fact that the price of that camera, which I'm now waiting to arrive, would pay for a trip to Africa, or a good part of a safari anyway. And I told you that my wife, Amanda, had grown up in seven different African countries. Her father uh, was a zoologist and tropical agriculturalist, and he in fact played part in establishing game reserves. So whether we were dreaming of a trip to Swaziland, or more realistically, to our own Canadian Serengeti, the Musqua Ketchika in northern British Columbia, 18 grand could pay for a lot of helicopter rides or a good chunk of an RV, <laughs> which we'd truly love to own now that our aging joints don't agree with sleeping on the ground. I've actually traversed the territory of the Musqua Ketchika several times, first in the mid 70s in a battered 1959 Chevy pickup, by bicycle in the 90s, and most recently by car. But like on those other trips, I'd likely be carrying a more modest collection of lenses. But no. No, actually, given the kit I've assembled over the last few years, I'd be equipped like never before. But back to Nikon's big announcement. I'm not going to examine its every feature. That will come firsthand, soon enough, from those who've been testing and those who will have it to review in the coming days. I bet you'll actually find a recommendation beside this since the embargo floodgates are open. But like the amazing 58mm f.95 Noct, this lens once more showcases Nikon's leadership in lens design and manufacture, and the possibilities afforded by the Z mount itself. Should my latest lottery ticket be <laughs> the one, you never know our state gambling corporation likes to tempt. This lens truly sounds like the king of wildlife and sports lenses. The built-in TC transforms it into a 560mm f4 lens. Anyway, at either focal length, the bokeh looks so creamy <laughs> that you could uh, top a trifle with it. Delicious. I've been looking at the sample photos. 
As return viewers know, my second lifelong obsession has been cycling. Yeah, the aforementioned trip took me through BC, Alaska, and the Yukon two months on the road, so I appreciate the track racing photos. Mind you, even at uh, 2,950 grams, 850 grams lighter than the F-mount equivalent, I wouldn't want to carry it <laughs> in my pannier. And speaking of its F-mount predecessor, Canadian 13999 with a $600 savings looks like a bargain right now. Except, okay, no built-in TC, right? I got to try that iteration a few years ago. An amazing lens. Still beyond what I could rationalize, given that I'm not a full-time wildlife or sports photographer. Would I buy this Z-mount version if I could? In a heartbeat. Unless I had a pacemaker. In that case, Nikon warns, do not use this product if you have a pacemaker or other medical device. The magnet or magnets in this product could cause medical devices to malfunction. <laughs> so be forewarned. Seriously, I'd love to take this lens to Africa or the Yukon or down to the local velodrome. No doubt this will be, as Nikon boasts, a new pinnacle of performance for sports action and wildlife shooters. The core function comes from what they've dubbed the Silky Swift Voice Coil Motor, or VCM, that uses magnets instead of gears to move focus groups. I'm no engineer, but this looks very impressive. As the Z9 is rolled out, in fact, all the components of the Z system, not to mention the, the mirrorless revolution generally, advanced by all the manufacturers in developing the technology. I'm reminded just how revolutionary the art, the trade, the hobby of photography has been over its relatively short lifetime, and how glad I am to have become fascinated with it and made a career of it. I'm grateful to have experienced the days of film and silver printing, the digital revolution, autofocus, but I'm also keenly aware that it's not imperative to own every piece of new groundbreaking gear that the engineers come up with. That's why in this arena, the F-mount 500mm 5.6 PF is still a valid choice, and Nikon launched the relatively affordable 100 to 400 F 4.5 to 6.3 along with the Z9. That option is looking more attractive to me now. And as per my test video, I have the Z70 to 200 2.8 VRS with two times teleconverter to see me through to the Lotto fantasy. <laughs> so that's my personal take on this announcement. I see wildlife and sports shooters are already putting in their orders. I'm waiting for a local rep to drop by my store with a copy, like they did with its predecessor, so I can shoot a few frames. The video I had originally planned for this space will drop in a few days. In the meantime, cheers, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you later.